Okay, microwaves. Microwaves. Anything special you gotta do with microwaves to keep them going, aside from not putting one on top of the stove over the range is not the way to go if you wanna keep your microwaves going a long time. Right. Don't get them over the range, right? right? Okay, so is there anything you need to do that helps keep them going longer or are they just one of those things that just goes and then dies? Did we mention no ammonia? <laughs> no ammonia, okay. So the ammonia kills it too. Absolutely. Um, that makes sense. I just try to avoid ammonia base cleaners okay. altogether. So Windex, uh, guys, there are a lot of people that love their Windex, but mm -hmm. you got to get the no ammonia right. Windex if you're going to want your Windex. But, you know, our Dining on a Dime cookbook, we have you we have a glass cleaner. You can just leave the ammonia on it. It works really, really good. Absolutely. But it's just a homemade cleaner, vinegar, a, a, just a little drop of, of dish soap. But... It's the ammonia that's breaking down all these parts. Absolutely. And so it's in so many cleaning products. People just have no idea how many cleaning products it's in. So right. just make sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next is washer and dryer. Is there okay. anything that we need to do to keep our washer and dryer going so that we don't burn parts out? Uh, well, clean the vent. I just right, did that. Absolutely. <laughs> I yeah. just Clean did the that. vent or get the vent cleaned. A lot yeah. of services can do it from the outside. Uh, oh, before going further, for the microwave, oh, yeah. one easy tip that I found for making it uh, a little easier to clean, because you get splatters, um, microwave a bowl of water in there, give it five minutes, Steam let it, it boil, mm -hmm. let, leave the door closed, let it sit in there for a while and sort of culminate for want yeah. of a better description. <laughs> well, it just and soaks the stuff off. Absolutely. It It'll sponge right out after okay. that. So do you need to add lemon? Bit. Some people say add lemon and all Could. that stuff. Do you need to do that? I don't or? think so. No, I've, I've heard okay. of the lemon. I've heard of the, uh, the vinegar. Um, I mm -hmm. do discourage apple cider vinegar for most of these mm -hmm. applications. I like yeah. the white distilled. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly for a bacterial basis, you're going to mm -hmm. get uh, a bacterial boosting effect sometimes from the cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's fermented, so you've already got bacteria right. in there, guys, so it's just yeah. going to grow more bacteria. Yeah, that makes sense. People never talk about that. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So anyway, I didn't mean to Yeah, no, that's fine. That's a good tip, laundry. yeah. So dryer sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used dryer sheets ever. Right on. But I have used fabric softener before. Okay. But I've heard that dryer sheets are really bad. Is that true? The wax that's on the dryer sheets will melt and coat your clothes to make that anti-static. Okay. And, and a, it's a hydrophobic presence um, that also coats the lint trap in your dryer. Mm -hmm. So you are slowly closing off the little tiny holes in the screen on your lint trap and you need to get that cleaned off once in a while. For the average family of four, if they're using dryer sheets per load, I would say every other month, take that lint trap to the kitchen sink, get your cheap dollar store plastic dish brush mm -hmm. and run hot water on it and scrub it gently on both sides so that it cleans that wax off of there. Oh, okay. I and never knew that. If you... I mean, I knew it clogged, but I guess I never knew how you were supposed to fix it. I thought right. it just was clogged. Right. So... Well, if you if you suspect it's clogged, take it and gently run cold water on it. The cold water won't go through it. Oh, really? Because it's hydrophobic wax. Oh, okay. Know? So yeah. that's a dead giveaway that it's just time to clean it. Well, there you go. Okay. It doesn't need any detergents. It doesn't need any special drying time. You can give it a shake, you know, smack, okay. the, smack the cat with it, whatever. And <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. But give oh, it a shake and maybe tap on it on. <laughs> I, he's only kidding, guys. He's only kidding. But no, I know what you, I've had that cat before. So yeah, exactly. I, I know. So yeah, tap it out gently on your hand yeah. and you can put it right into service. It doesn't have to be okay. dried out special or anything um so just like on the first day of each month just get that thing cleared or something absolutely. like that because yeah. or every holiday or something but, yeah okay yeah um what else on dryers what about molding washers uh, so i i do get a little bit more sideways on chemicals attacking that uh molds and mildews uh, a spray bleach is kind of your friend. Well, see, my tip that I've done for, what, 20 years I've had a front loader now. I just run a load of whites with bleach right. 
once every week or 10 days. There you go. And I have never had never a smell, had never had, had, never had anything. And then I leave the door open. Absolutely. So I don't know if I was doing that right or not, nope, but it was just kind good. of intuition that if it's dry and it's bleached, then the mold can't grow. Absolutely. That's what I was thinking. Absolutely. But so there is a one thing to keep an eye on these front load washing machines in the bottom of the mm -hmm. boot. They should have drain holes. Yeah. And if those are plugging up with detergent residue due to overconsumption, um, hair, Kleenex, hair, yeah, yeah, hair and sand. I see a lot of sand in them. Oh. I see buildup from fabric softener because uh -huh. it's not being blended properly with water before it's added to the unit, oh. or they're using too much. Okay. Uh, or they're running cold washes. <sighs> Don't run cold washes if you're using a detergent. It does not break down. Oh, if your, really? If your incoming water is over eighty degrees and then by all means, run the cold because you're not going to get any colder. Yeah. But so if you live in these... Florida. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> I don't know. You know, our water here in town oh. is way cold. Oh, Sometimes yeah. it's down in the high 30s. Yeah, we're and... in Wyoming. And we were just talking today about getting a glass of cold water out of the faucet. Right. And I said, well, it's because the pipes are to the outside of the house here. <laughs> and you would never get by with that here. But right. okay, that I didn't even think about not right. running so you're, cold. Right. Your detergents are done their he detergents mm -hmm. in general any any granular liquid uh pods it doesn't matter mm -hmm. they are tested at 80 degrees in the laboratory that is considered cold oh, okay. in the laboratory tests okay so if your tap water cold is colder than 80 degrees you want to be bumping it up to warm okay um, you need that 80 degree minimum to properly break the detergent up so that it acts on your stains and, and grimes okay. and clothes. Um, if you're not, you're getting a buildup of detergents and uh, both in the machine and in your clothes. So Is there you, something you need to do to your machine to get rid of that buildup every now yeah, and then? You can give it a snort of vinegar. Okay. Uh, vinegar will help eat a How lot of that How much do you put other. in there? You can put a cup full. It's, okay. it's, it doesn't suds, so yeah. it's not going to cause problems. Just run an empty washer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Or like towels, I guess, or something you could do maybe. Ugh, I don't know. You, With that? If you could run your junk rags. Okay. Just don't run stuff that you're willing to part with because oh, it will it'll break clean. stuff loose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I see the the hoses and pumps in the bottom of these units. They, they get this scum built up, and it pinches off the hoses and starves pumps. Oh. Uh, gums them up and they, how often should you do that what's that how often should you do that <laughs> well if you're running warm or hot and doing maybe once every other month uh, okay. for a cleaning or more often some of the new machines even prompt you to do it um, okay. they do have name brand cleaners available that I'm kind of up in the air on there's the the bright green box a fresh brand you see a mm -hmm. lot of these yeah. new washers have clean with a fresh mm -hmm. option on them and it'll be like a large heavy duty wash cycle with with uh, hot only um, so run the hottest water you can mm -hmm. with vinegar yeah. and you can run it by itself absolutely or rags. Or rags. I have never done that. So now you got me curious because <laughs> I've never cleaned it that way. Well, so. and your, your preventative maintenance of running a load with bleach once in a while is going to be... Absolutely. Okay. It's going to okay. be great. Um, there are many washing machines that the front door has. You know, if you've ever mm -hmm. seen a car door that stops halfway, yeah. like a safety stop, mm -hmm. some of them have that in the hinges. Um, other models... Like the LG has a little spring-loaded magnet underneath the glass. You don't usually see it, but if you gently close it, you'll see it kind of oh, hold it. Yeah. And it holds it ajar. Uh -huh. um, online, there is Door Dock, D-O-C-K, like a boat dock. Mm -hmm. DoorDock.com uh, has kind of a C-shaped device that magnetically holds against the the washer door and touches the frame to hold that door open just a little bit more okay. but it's magnetic so it won't swing open yeah. on you if you have you know traffic mm -hmm. there yeah um that's also very beneficial but make sure that those holes are draining okay sand and hair doesn't go away like like uh the slime yeah. and stuff so if you have a mechanical 
blockage, if you will, it needs addressed mechanically instead okay. of chemically. Now, detergents, you mentioned briefly detergents. Is there a detergent that's better, like does powder or liquid or the pods, are any of those better than, than one or the other? So the application is what kind of depicts those. I like my dry detergents. I grew up with Amway, you yeah. know, the Amway <laughs> SA8 was yeah, the thing. Definitely I, Amway. Really, I'd still use it if I could find it. Yeah. But, um, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's funny. Your, your dry detergents are going to act on greases, uh, grease type stains better. Oh, so, really? Yes, your dry detergents are going to break those up better your rags, your cooking, you know, uh -huh. hot pads, whatever, your dry detergents will probably act a little better on those. That makes sense. So I always have oil stains because yes. I'm t horrible about not wearing an apron when I'm cooking. <laughs> and I, I was just thinking the other day, I was like, why is my stain remover not working so well? I switched from powder to liquid. To liquid, yeah make a big difference. I'll bet you. So your liquid application detergent okay. is they, if you can find it, it'll say um, animal lipids. Mm -hmm. So that is a fat based um, sort of suspension to make it viscous. Okay. It's going to act on dirt type stains better. The liquid does better the liquid for dirt. The liquid does better for dirt. But the powder does better for grease. Absolutely. And then what do the pods do? Anything? <laughs> they, <laughs> or are they just nice to... They either them. make it so that you overdose the machine or you get a, a baseline for consumption. You know, okay. there are, uh, I believe there are some that actually have dry and liquid in encapsulated in them in different pods. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. Um, okay. They're doing that for, for dishwashers now. You'll have some uh -huh. dry and some liquid, and then there's even a rinse aid added in there. Yeah. Um, I've used, I, I actually. I can't bring myself to pay the price, but I got some free for a sample. <laughs> and I actually really loved the dishwasher pods. Dishwasher now, I've pods, never yeah. used a washing machine pod before, but they basically don't really do anything. It's just for convenience for you. Well, I don't know. You know, you're talking about your whites. I um, I actually used the um, Tide pods, the best edibles uh -huh. there are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's going to wake up your yeah. comment section, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Tide Pods have uh, uh, something that does really well on those whites oh. in a hot wash. I was really pleased with the outcome. Huh. Uh, of course, I'm always running an additional rinse. I, mm -hmm. I don't want heavy perfumes. I don't yeah. want residues. Um, I was really pleased with how the whites came out off of the Tide Pods. So I, I don't mm. think they're bad. Okay. Um, for some people, the pods are great. We have pods at home because my kids help with laundry. I have like a bunch of kids. You have a lot of kids. <laughs> and you have a lot of we kids. Have You're not Duggars a lot of kids. <laughs> but my five kids is a small family for you. So, yes, you have a lot of kids. So we have two laundry uh -huh. stations. We yeah. have a stacked uh, set and we have a laundry center, which is kind of an all-in-one cabinet. And the pods are great for the kids. They can toss one in. Yeah. Wash it and go. Um, and that saves on maid services. So, yeah, yeah, it does. Hiring yeah. somebody to help mom with the laundry is, it's cheaper to buy the pods. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the uh, overconsumption issues I deal with in liquid the most. Um, traditionally, I'll say only use as much detergent as you're going to get the proper wash out of. But, but how do you know what that is? The baseline is dramatically less than you think it is. Uh, see, that's what mom and I always tell people to start off with like a quarter of a of the cap full and oh. see if it gets your clothes clean. And the, is that too little? That'd be like upper level. That's the upper. Oh, that's the upper level. Yes. Seriously. So two factors happen here. Oh man. HE detergents are made for super concentrated uh -huh. application. The company that's selling you that is in the business of selling yeah. you detergent, yeah. not making your machine last. So, so are you talking like a tablespoon? As like a max size. Yes. Oh, a maximum? Yeah. Two tablespoons is going to be for max size loads in most front load washers available for residential nowadays. So average, what would you average? Yeah. What would average it... load size is going to be a tablespoon. Um, wow. Small load size can be as little as a teaspoon. 
Now there are ultra and super concentrated uh, liquid detergents out there available now. And they even measure themselves because they are so, you know, eight, so 10 cool. times more concentrated than the average stuff that we buy. So you invert the bottle and go, and it's measured it, it goes, and it's done. And wow. You hit it twice, you will have suds coming out everywhere. You're not supposed to see suds with HE detergents. That's your that's okay. your big baseline, your big dead giveaway. You get a top load washer with the complaint generator 3000 glass lid. You look in and you see suds, it's overdosed. Um, oh, it's gonna wow. it's gonna run many cycles to try to get rid of suds. It's going to lock up with clothes still in it, waiting mm -hmm. for the suds to settle. Yep. You know, feed it a snort of vinegar, run an extra rinse, get rid of the right. suds, start over, and okay. cut that consumption way down because that is a big killer on clothes and machines is too much detergent. Okay, that totally shocked me. Here, I thought I was using so little. And I was using like triple what I should have been right. using for detergent. Right. Oh my goodness. That makes a big difference. And how many people just fill the cup totally full and just dump it in there? Oh, wow. The That's target crazy. The customers, yeah. I believe, would be. So if you're people. buying, if you're buying, unless you have the amount of kids you have, <laughs> if you're <laughs> buying an entire thing of laundry detergent every month, you're using way too much. Then, Absolutely. Just for an average family of, you know, four or five people. Right. Wow. Yeah. And here my detergent lasts me almost six months anyway. Right so on. I could be getting a year out of an entire thing of detergent. Oh my Quite goodness. Possibly. Well, wow. I didn't vid meet you the first time visiting about a washing machine issue. So you're yeah. doing something right. Okay. <clears throat> it's probably just because I'm not using so much detergent, but I could be using less. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's totally shocked me more than anything on this whole thing was here. I thought I was using so little. I thought I was almost maybe using a little too much because my stains weren't coming out, right. but come to find out it's because I switched from powder to liquid. Makes a big difference. Oh, I keep both on hand. Okay. Um, the pods are for ease of use. Um, the, the liquids are for those dirt, you know, the yep. kids clothes. If yeah. I'm, if I see something need wash and I wash it, I'll, yeah. I'll use the liquid. So if you have kids, you need the liquid. <laughs> need the liquid. If you have a cookbook author <laughs> mom who refuses to wear an apron, you need the powder. And if yeah. you have kids doing the laundry, you need the pods. There we go. If they're not going to eat them. Right. <laughs> so Hopefully not. not gonna eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about overloading. Oh. I think this is a huge one, but. I do too. You're the official, so you, it's out straight for your health. <laughs> okay, so A number one, a top load machine is not capable of washing a bedspread ever. Yeah. And that's the quickest way to break the machine or ruin the bedspread or both. Mm -hmm. So all the new top load machines have four metal rods with springs that hangs all the weight. These oh. machines are typically referred to as a 13 pound machine. So that is the weight of the clothes and the water in, in most cases. Oh. If, if you go past wow. that, you're going to damage the springs. If you are running synthetics and cottons together, you're going to go out of balance easy because it's swinging on those rods. That could lead to bending one of those rods and then you're out oh, wow. uh, okay. 70, 80, $120 repairing that machine. Mm -hmm. So mixed loads are a big no-no. You can easily see it using a fleece blanket and two towels. Wash them together. Your front load washing machine will hop off the floor and scare the neighbor's dog. Oh, wow. The top load machines, I've literally seen feet come six, eight inches off the floor and they will walk across the floor because oh they goodness. cannot handle it, period. Okay. So, you know, do your... Only cottons in one load, only synthetics in another. If you have an agitator and a top load, run like a, it's gonna be a little more aggressive. So if you have delicates, um, undergarments, uh, that stuff like a top with a thin mm -hmm. strap, put it in a mesh bag with a zipper, not a drawstring style laundry okay. bag. It must be a zipper type because those drawstrings will end up with a call to the maintenance guy as well. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> so Draw front loaders, how, how full do you put a front loader then? So front load is going to take a little bit more weight, maybe say 18 pounds on your average size, like yours mm -hmm. here. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, do you feel it half full, three quarters full? No. It's based more on weight. So, so like a load of jeans would be heavier than, say, a load of T-shirt. Well, or, you know, like tank tops or something, I guess. Well, but... which is heavier, a ton of feathers or a ton of bricks? Yeah. So okay. your your bulk is going to be what people usually eyeball, not the weight. But mm -hmm. a good, for instance, that I give people is max size you're going to get in almost any of these home or residential mm -hmm. style washing machines would be equivalent to eight pairs of blue jeans or eight towels. Like, you know, your Oh, that's your it? Towels. Yeah. That's about your max size. So that oh, you wow. get your, your okay. maximum amount of action of detergent and clothes on clothes, friction of water against clothes against machine. So really um, that you shouldn't have it more than three quarters full. I mean, right. if I'm, if I'm visualizing, I think I'm visualizing about right, but about two thirds to three quarters full. Max. Yeah. Max. Wow. Max. And okay. your top load machines are going to be even less. You know, okay. if you look in the, in your top load washing machine and you see holes in the sides of the basket where water would go out uh -huh. during extraction, your third hole up for these new machines is about all the water they're gonna take on. Oh, so wow. if you have one of those silly wash plate impeller styles with no uh -huh. no good old agitator, yeah. you load stuff to the sides as if you had an agitator and you only put them in as, you know, maybe to the fourth hole because it's not going to take on much more than a couple of inches of water the tip of that impeller will still be out of the water in most cases. And your, um, if you can still see it, you're getting your best water action. They're great for delicates and small yeah. loads, but they're, they're really ineffective for larger loads completely. Oh and I fix more of them due to damages by bed spreads than anything else. So take those to the laundromat, laundromat and big put front it load in a commercial big machine. Yep. It's just um, not worth doing it at home. Now can absolutely. the can the front loading um H E washers can the front or the front loading washers can they handle the bed spreads? Some of them, yeah. Uh, it, I wouldn't put a king size in one. I was going to say, does mine handle it? Am I, <laughs> you so got a I queen need, size bed? No, you know, I have a king, so I king. need to be taking it to the yeah, laundromat. I'd probably take it to the laundromat. Okay. Because you have shock absorbers on your front loaders, yeah. and they're going to take that abuse. Um, okay. That gets uh, to flopping around pretty hard, and it can take the bearings out of your washing machine. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm heading to the laundromat now <laughs> with my... <laughs>